Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan, and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to break down the top tech news of the day. We're going to answer one of your reader questions, and then we're going to show you one cool thing that we pull off the shelf in the lab. Sasha, let's get to the big news of the day, and that's that competition is heating up in the low cost laptop market. Yesterday, HP announced plans to launch a $199 Windows laptop. MacBook! In addition to that, oh. Acer and HP are going to launch $259 laptops. MacBook! <laughs> And they're going to be on sale this holiday season running Windows 8.1. I, I think I have something caught in my throat. I think it's a <sighs> netbook. Are you allergic to netbooks? Is um, this um, I, I think this, this story is really funny because didn't we see this in 2007? Not with Windows, not with Windows 8. Right, with the previous version of Windows, which was, uh, I mean, they didn't allow them to run XP. Mm -hmm. XP was a really good version of Windows. So I don't think, like, the Windows 8 versus XP is going to be the big differentiator here. Um, great, we have netbooks again. What killed netbooks? Was it iPads? It was a lack of appeal. However, there's, I, I would say there's more interest in this type of category now, and they're really doing this to, to attack Chromebooks. Chromebooks are now 35% of the commercial sales market. That means sales into institutions, into government agencies. There are a lot of Chromebooks being sold, less so into the consumer market, but this is a, this is a thriving category. Microsoft can't stay out of it. They have to have a, an offering here. But I think we need to ask, I, I don't have the answer to this question. We don't, okay. have, the, we don't have the product. The, but, the, but I don't have the answer to this question. I'm asking you, the viewer, the answer to this question, which is that Microsoft seems to be replaying a strategy that we saw five years ago that created a huge netbook market, which then totally collapsed. Okay, how is that not going to happen again? I think it's the performance. We got to see how they perform. We got to see if they perform like netbooks, this is going to be a non-starter. If they perform like standard laptops and you get Windows 8 for $200, that could be a winning proposition. So, but we have to get the products in. They're going to hit the market in the holiday time frame. We'll get them to the lab. We will test them, and then we will be able to answer your question. Okay. All right. Also in the news, Nest Labs, now owned by Google, has released a new home automation standard called Thread. Now, this is a standard that's going to be operating, obviously, the Nest thermostat. It'll connect to your smart alarm, your smart alarm system, your smart fridge. And they've got a number of backers. They've got Samsung, big backer, Arm, a big backer. Google's obviously behind it. But perhaps most importantly, Big ass fans. Big ass I, fans. I, I, I love big ass fans, okay? I love saying their name over and over again. I love what they do. I love the physics. It's these fans with these giant blades and they rotate really slowly so they're quiet and they move huge amounts of air and sometimes you don't need air conditioning. Okay, so big ass fans. I'm on board with whatever they're doing. But at the same time, we need another home automation standard. Like, I need like extra holes in my head. My head has enough holes in it. We have enough home automation standards in the world right now. I don't see why we need an additional one. We've got Apple HomeKit that's just taking off. We've got Zigbee, which has been around forever. We've got the Bluetooth Smart, which is sort of a mobile-centric standard, that also accomplishes a lot of this command and control. There are a lot of standards. I'm forgetting how many standards there are. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's Z-Wave. Nobody uses that. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, and this just seems to be these various groups circling their wagons to try to establish dominance. And when we've seen this in the past in the industry, what happens is that just no consumers pick up or use the products because the level of confusion is so high that none of these standards can achieve critical mass. Yeah, what works with what is going to be a question that we're answering for years to come. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to our next story, which is a fun story, which is that a high-tech coolest cooler has topped $4.6 million in Kickstarter funding. They wanted to build $50,000 worth of coolers. Now they've got $4.6 million to build this cooler, which has a built-in blender, removable waterproof Bluetooth speaker, USB charger, built-in cutting board, and a slew of other features. I think it keeps things cold as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the gadget is a really cool gadget. And the guy behind it runs some sort of inspirational service for inventors, so he has some sort of experience in this field. But I'm just concerned, as I've been concerned with Kickstarter projects like this before, of you create a project plan for $50,000 worth of coolers, and then suddenly you have $4.6 million worth of orders for 24,000 coolers. And going from zero to scale unexpectedly is where a lot of these manufacturing projects fall apart. So I'm concerned about that. Yeah, it's worth throwing, but we'll see how he does. We have to do a follow up once they actually start shipping. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to a reader question now. We answer reader questions on Twitter, on Facebook, via email, in the comments on YouTube. We answer them live every day. Today, Rob is asking via YouTube, he wants a Windows phone on T-Mobile, but he hasn't seen anything fresher than the Lumia 925. 
when are they going to get something new and exciting on Windows Phone? Well, Microsoft's big focus for Windows Phone over the past six months has been uh, has been in low-cost devices. And they've been making deals with manufacturers of low-cost Windows Phones and churning out a lot of low-cost Windows Phones, and you're not interested in that. Well, the good news is um, I think there's going to be a Microsoft event probably in early October, late October at the latest, where they do introduce a new set of flagship Windows 8.1 phones. Um, there's no confirmation about this event. This is just me knowing Microsoft's past history. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that we are going to see some high-end Windows phones on AT&T and T-Mobile for the holidays. There you go. If you can hold out until then, Rob, you'll get new phones. Let's move on to one cool thing. We test thousands of, our, of products here in our lab in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. Today that thing is the VTech Kitty Zoom smartwatch. It is $60 and it is a smartwatch for kids, although I, presumably if you're an adult and you're into the style, you could get, you could wear it as well. It's a smart digital camera that tells time. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a smartwatch the way we, in, we understand smartwatches it doesn't in run apps world. per it, se. Well, it has three built-in games for kids. It tells time. And then on the front here, you have a VGA digital camera that records 320 by 240, 15 frame per second video. So uh, the tester we used for this device was five years old, and he really loved it. He had no trouble using it. You know what? It's a cute little toy if you don't expect too much of it. 60 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong. I think a lot of kids would love to have it. I know when I was five years old, I would love to have a watch. Okay, there you go. That's PC Mag Live for today. Tune in tomorrow for a brand new show. Thanks for joining us.